You're asking the question, why do bad things happen to good people? And why does God allow suffering? Well, there's, there's three scriptures I want us to focus in on. One is Romans 5, 12, where it says, where, For by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, because all have sinned. Uh, the second is in 1 John 3, 8, where it says, The devil sent us from the, from the beginning. In those two scriptures, 1 John 3, 8, Romans 5, 12, we find two orders of beings. The devil was an angel. The angels were created with freedom of choice. Then by one man sent into the, into the world, God created man. He made man with the freedom of choice. Beyond freedom of choice, there's the law of cause and effect. No one would argue that the universe, in order for it to be habitable, has to be one of order and balance. Uh, because there are effects, there are negative effects that happen as a, as a result of disorder and imbalance. And so God made angels with freedom of choice. Angels sin first, then men sin. As a result of that, there is suffering, there is death in this world. And that suffering and death happens to both good and what we would call bad people as well. The reason why God made us with the freedom of choice is simply because if he didn't, we would all be robots. We'd all be machines. We would be, we would, this is like an auto, but it drives because it's made to drive, not because it chooses to drive. God made us not to be a machine. He made us as free moral agents where we can choose to love him. In order for it to be love, there must be freedom of choice. Matter of fact, on the internet today, you can buy a doll uh, that can be your wife, life-size doll. You can buy a doll that can be your husband, that can make, that can cook food and do all these things, but there's no love because these things are made to do what the maker intended for it to do. So because the angels sinned, we have suffering in this world, and the angels continue to sin. They, they continue to have uh, the ability to choose to do what is wrong, and we suffer as a result of that. Uh, and man has the freedom today to do what is wrong, and we suffer as a result of man's disobedience. Uh, some have asked the question, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Which is really, at the very foundation, not a very good question. Let me explain why that's not a good question. Christ said in Matthew 5, 44 and 45, he says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, do good to those who despitefully use you and persecute you. He says, that you may be the children of your Father, who causes the sun to rise on the just and on the unjust, and sendeth his rain upon the just and the unjust. In other words, God is not a respecter of persons. He loves bad people equally to good people, or what we call good people. He does not discriminate uh, when it comes to bad people or good people. Let me explain, let me explain what, that, what, that, what that's all about. When a bad person who was a mass murderer, who was a rapist, uh, when that person gets cancer, God is hurt just as much as a person who gave to the poor, a person who uh, uh, served humanity, who obeyed the laws of man, the laws of God, he's hurt just as much when a rapist suffers as he does when a good person suffers because he loves all people equally. Now, the believer has the promise of eternal life. However, in the things that pertain to this life, God does not discriminate. The question, why do, why do bad people suffer? The implication is, is that good people should not suffer. But, but on the basis of the fact that they are good, in other words, the suggested the implication behind the question is that we deserve to be treated better because we believe ourselves or we believe our mother or our father to be good. And for that reason, they should not suffer. 
But don't you know that God's love is not something that can be earned because we're good. Uh, God's love is automatic because that's his very nature. So God favors uh, and he sends his rain, his blessings upon bad people as well as good people. And because of the freedom of choice, because of the law of cause and effect, good people suffer as well as bad people suffering. However, we must understand that in suffering, we ask the question, why do good people have to suffer? Understand there's only one that's good, and that's Jesus Christ. And guess what? He suffered. He suffered upon the cross of Calvary. He suffered when he came into human flesh. He suffered. So the implication is uh, for the unbeliever who asked the question, why does God allow suffering? We should respond by saying that the son, God's own son, suffered. And when his son suffered on the cross, God himself suffered because God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And then finally, understand that, that there's an end result, there's an end road to suffering. And the end of the road to suffering is when Christ comes again the second time and he creates a new heaven and a new earth. But he wants to do it with our free will intact. When he creates a new heaven and a new earth, he's not going to, to make us robots, to make us live righteously throughout eternity. No, we will be convinced. He wants to convince the universe that his path, his way, his law is what is right. And we choose to do right because we love him. And therefore, because we are so convinced of that, he can trust us through all eternity. And so he can bless us, he can favor us, he can end our suffering, and yet our free will will remain intact. God bless you.